um, some presentations from the North End, from some organizations in the North End. Um, we had, uh, we think of the park as one great park, but we know we're a part of great neighborhoods along the park, and um, North End is one of those great neighborhoods. Um, Christopher Columbus Park um, is a, a park associated with that, <coughs> and, but, but not part of the Greenway. Um, but because we're such close neighbors, we like to work with these folks very much. And Friends of the North End Parks are a new group that is organized um, to help us with the Greenway. Um, so one of the things that we want to make sure we do is that we are responsive to all our constituents. And one of the things that we did uh, last week was to bring the group together in the North End to talk about what the whole community's priorities are. And led by Robin Reed and, um, and John, we, we had two board members there who were um, from the North End, involved with the North End. We went into great factories with the staff, and we, we had about 30 people there and were able to get some real priorities of what the North End really wanted. Um, so we'll talk about that in, in a bit, um, but I want to turn it over to our friends from friends of Christopher Columbus Park. Um, because Joanne um, has agreed to make a presentation to us, and she has to be, because she has the duty of the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park to get to. Um, so Joanne Haynes Rhines is part of the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park. Um, she has a lot of experience with working with the um, City Park Department, and she can take us through what she's doing there and how she's doing it. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Georgia. Thank you all board members for inviting me tonight. Uh, yes, I am the president of Friends of Christopher Columbus Park. It has been three years. Uh, the organization, I'm sure you've probably all heard of it, but may not know a lot about it. It was formed in 2001 after the park was redesigned. Uh, for those of you who weren't in the area at the time, the three trellises were not in a straight row at the time. They were this, this, and the third one pointed to the Marriott. So that was one of the big changes that they made is they aligned the trellises. They also stamped all that lovely asphalt that you see. Uh, they upgraded the tot lot, and they did, it was a major project for the city. At the time, they created a friends group uh, that was to oversee the park, do the things that the city couldn't do, and they uh, joined the abutters, the Marriott, Tia's, the other commercial establishments, to get them involved and to have them contribute to things that needed to be in the park. Now, I consider you especially lucky because you have two founding members of the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park on your board, Suzanne LeBoy and Chris Fincham. And then you're triply lucky because you have our Robin Reed uh, on your board now, who is our horticultural chair. Two of your former board members were also founding members, Danny Nuzzo and Francine Gannon. So out of the uh, 12 founding members, four of them have been associated with the Greenway, which I think speaks pretty powerfully for the interconnection of the organizations. Um, we are an all-volunteer group, uh, which is interesting. It's um, very different. I've never belonged to a group like this before. I had no idea that parks had friends groups before I moved here. Um, and so when I joined it, I joined it to make friends. Little, little did I know that it would literally change my life and the lives of many of us who joined the organization. We have over 300 paid members now and over 50 active members. And when I say active, I mean active. This is a group I say sometimes I feel like I'm on a buckboard in a Wild West movie and it's just getting away from me. Those horses are taking me and I've got to figure out where they're going. So that energy is very positive and we continue to channel it in the, correct, in the right directions. And I think that is a challenge for our board is to be sure that we stay within the parameters of the original bylaws. We, we look to them often to be sure that what we're doing is what we're supposed to be doing. Um, a couple of years, about two years ago, I guess it is now, near in hand, the Boston Committee of the Garden Clubs of America came to us and they uh, made donations to park organizations around the city of Boston. It's, I think, 12 garden clubs, going to Smart Garden, there's Gloucester, there's one in Milton, one downtown. So they purposely raised money, this is their mission, to raise money for parks in Boston, which seemed pretty unique and nice to me. So we looked around Christopher Columbus Park, which I think is the best park in the city. 
um, and thought, what is it that really needed to have help? And most of the park incredibly well maintained. Our volunteers totally take care of the rose garden. We clean up the tot lot, we make a bulletin board, we make the blue lights, raise money for the blue lights on the trellis. Um, but there's one section that drove us all crazy. When I mentioned the renovation in 2001 with that lovely stamped area, it was supposed to be all asphalt. And I'll think of what I mean and hope you've all been in the park. So it looked like a parking lot. And I'm sure Chris and Suzanne were very influential in going to the city along with Danny and others and saying, this looks like a parking lot. We can't do this. So their solution was to carve out a circle. It's about a 24 foot diameter circle. Stick in three trees, put dirt in, put some perennials in, but don't give it any water. So in the spring, it usually looks fairly decent. You know, getting a little perennials up, it looks nice. But July, August, September, and October, it's just awful. So we hit on that as that would be the project that we would uh, write a grant for to the Lost Fund. Um, and they, um, so we did that. I've never written a grant before. I had a member who was a grant writer with talent, just about it. So we all worked together on this grant proposal, and we got a $10,000 grant, which was huge. Uh, then the city of Boston had to beautify Boston uh, program. We applied for that. Uh, we applied for $25,000 for that. We got $20,000. So out of two grant applications, we're 100%. And we stopped here. That would be a great story to tell. Uh, so I wanted to share with you what this area is, where we have what we're going to change. And I can't tell you what we're going to change it into, because that process is just starting. This park, as I said, there's an area, it's just asphalt, it's like the circle, the circle of, I call it an eyesore, I call it light, I call it that overstated, I don't, it really is. And what we want to change that from is a feeling of serene, beautiful, calming, and yet energized enough that kids can play and have a good time. I met today with the one of the uh, program managers of the city's landscaping department, uh, parks, partners, landscaping And um, sat with her for the first time. Uh, we've written an RFP for landscape architects. We've gone over that with her. She's helping us hone it and define really what it is that we want so the architects can understand it. And it hit me that what we're really trying to create in, in really just a gorgeous park is a little mini park, a mini park within the park. A tranquil little area, a section that you can walk through because it cuts the crossroads, it cuts north to south, north end to the south, and from the greenway connecting right to the ferries. Just thousands of people walk through there. And it's so funny when I even talked to Tom Powers of the Harbor Alliance and I said, Tom, you know that he actually wrote a letter about helping us with the blossom one endorsement letter and they were writing for the grant too so that was pretty cute um, but it's Tom you know that circle with the trees and he must walk by that how many times when he was going to the fair and doing he couldn't even remember it he goes oh yeah you know you could just say it's nothing but we want to turn it into really something that um, that will take what Christopher Columbus Park is already an iconic image of Boston with our beautiful blue lights all winter and to add this as another dimension uh, to just kind of put the cherry on the, on the hot foot Sunday. Um, so that's our major project this year. We also, for 4th of July week, uh, June 29th, we'll have another event for children in the park. We'll have, uh, we do our Columbus Day celebration on October 14th. We have movies sponsored by Joe Bono, who owns uh, Al Dente and Benevento's uh, restaurants in the North End. He sponsors Sunday night movie nights, which are great. Yeah. Uh, several hundred people to come to that. That's really fun. Um, and there are other events that go on in the park. Boston, Boston, City's Boston Arts Festival is there too. So it's very energized. It's very busy. Um, we're delighted with the efforts that the Greenway is making, the connection there. And I really do appreciate being able to be here to share.
share some of this. Like, of course, not Jesse and no people who are here, but in how to formally present what the Prince of Christopher Columbus are and what we do. I really do appreciate that. They said we're all volunteers. We have a budget of about uh, $60,000 a year. That includes about $40,000 for the lights. So uh, we run a tight little ship with a lot of energizing bunnies, and the whole thing just turns out to be perfect, at least in our opinion. It's great. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer? I, I, when is you expect the uh, construction or the, oh, the work to be done? When do I expect construction to be done? Then? Sitting down with the program uh, manager today, we expect to get the RFPs out by the end of the month. And um, then, as she was working through these details, I didn't understand half of the terms she was using. I said, what do, you, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? Because again, this is all new to us. So we want to have the, the basics done. We want, we're, this will be at least tripled in size, this circle. I don't know what shape it's going to be. Be irregular, pathways will be irregular, won't be hard, it will be very soft. Um, so that the whole thing would be cut out, nice and dirt would be in there, hopefully the curbing would be in there, maybe some trees, plants, the basis of it, you can tell what it, what it is. My goal, and I know Matt's taping me and it doesn't work, um, <laughs> but I would really love to have a little ribbon cutting on Columbus Day. So, you know, with the old man, we would have all the little benches, we would have it all completed. But I just think that would really be powerful if we could do that. And then, um, Marilino, would still be here, be, be at that, because he really loves the market. So I think that, that's a goal. That's my goal. Dave, could you have a comment? I know you guys have done a terrific job at the park itself, a tremendous job. Thank you. I think that's what I've been listening to that kind of I wish, and this may not be for your ears, but I wish there were better connections between the park and the rest of the park. I don't know if you've talked to the Marriott Park at all about somehow creating better connections through the Marriott. I've heard a rumor that might someday change that, that entrance way through there and create a better connection. It would be wonderful to be on one side of the Marriott and have some sense of what's on your side. going around the Marriott in one direction, uh, we get to go by a rubbish pile that's in there that you know, probably experience any of the walk by there as an experience that. And then of course in the other direction is quite a long walk to get around to the park. And also going into the, the North End waterfront as well. The Harbor Walk uh, is not what it should be beyond the Christmas of Columbus Park. It's just too bad that there are greater connections, better connections. Well, if I really had to echo your feelings about the one side of the Marriott versus the other side of the Marriott. You go from the carnival to lovely green trees, and that's an issue the city's going to have to deal with. Certainly, the work district council has certainly been talking about that. Uh, it could be a lot done on the other side of the Marriott because it, it's it's not what that should be. Just make a historical comment. The original design of the Marriott had that as a through passage with an air curve, probably a curve. Yeah, they did away with it. <laughs> um, was that Kevin White was doing this thing? Yeah, they did away with it. Yeah. Yeah. They were allowed to do anything they could. The original Marriott design was open. Otherwise, there was a lot of work. Thank you. 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 Great. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you very much.